Okay everyone, this is Monica Lupion and today we're going to continue with the performance of membranes and how we can use the equations that we covered so far related to mass transfer. If you recall from previous lectures when we study this two resistance theory, we did the analysis over um, gas-liquid interface separating gas and liquid. And this is the diagram that we cover in, in the previous lectures. So we have on one side the source and on the other side is the sink. And we define this gas liquid interface and in that we can apply the ideal conditions and therefore we can apply, for example, the Henry's law. In the Hello everyone, this is Monica Lupion and today I will continue with the membrane for gas separation example. We're going to see how we can use the equations that we study uh, in mass transfer lecture so far and we see how we can play around with those equations in order to make it more specific for membranes. If you recall when we study these um, convective coefficient and um, when we study the mass transfer between phases we um, mentioned this two resistance theory and this is a diagram when we define the transportation of or the flux of the molecular uh, A from the gas to the liquid phase and we define as well this gas liquid interface. On your right this is a there is a diagram showing this uh, source and the sink and how in the interface we can assume that there are ideal conditions, uh, that there is equilibrium over there. We're going to do the same in the case of the membrane. And in this particular case, for two gas phases, we still have the source and we have a sink. The only difference is that now we have in between, as the in, in the interface, it's a very thin layer of material that is called membrane. But the approach will be very similar and um, there is transport of the element A from the source to the sink. So we'll see in a minute how we can apply the equations that we know. If you recall, we define two main equations in mass transfer. One is a general equation of mass transfer when we apply the conservation of mass of the element A. And the second equation is the fixed rate equation when we need to consider molecular diffusion and convective mass transfer. The way we normally solve the mass transfer systems is by integrating or combining these two equations plus um, make assumptions about uh, bantering conditions and initial conditions and with that we can find the solution mathematically. We're going to do exactly the same. Let's begin with the general equation of conservation. Um, we can assume that in a membrane process, uh, we can assume that it's a steady state, so there is no accumulation of the element inside the membrane. We can also assume that the uh, transfer happens only in one direction, and that there is no uniform chemical production. Therefore, we can simplify this equation number one and the final, let's say, taking into, con into consideration those assumptions, the final equation is that the uh, d molar flux in relation to d theta is equal to zero. That is, the molar flux is constant to the membrane which makes sense because if there is no accumulation and if there is no generation the molar flux, in order to be a steady state, needs to be constant. What about the second equation, the FIC equation? Well, if you consider a binary system of the element A and M, M from membrane, we can apply directly this FIC equation 
um, the molar flux of the element A will be a function of the concentration, the diffusivity of the element A through the membrane, the uh, y d zeta, plus the convective mass transfer contribution. If we assume that there is unimolecular diffusion, that is that only the element A is being transported from one side to the other, that is the membrane is not going anywhere, so there is no transport of any element of the membrane. Then we can simplify this equation a little bit further and just by cancelling this term, the, the molar flux of the element M. If we combine equation 1 and equation 2 and we integrate between the limits, that is, between the thickness of the membrane, which is from 0 to L, L being the thickness, has to be equal to the integration along the concentration variation of the element A and uh, diffusivity uh, over the 1 minus the uh, element Y times the concentration. If we solve the integration on the left side, we can say that the molar flux of A of A at the element A times the thickness is equal to minus this integration uh, integration term that you see on the right side of the equation. How can we solve this? We need to first define a new parameter, which is called permeability. Permeability is defined as a function of the molar flux over the delta P, which is the pressure difference of the element A in and out of the membrane, and divided by the thickness. So delta P, in this case, is the difference between P2 and P1, which are the upstream, that is the high pressure, and downstream, it is low pressure, between both sides of the membrane. In a gas mixture, we can define these P2 and P1 as the partial pressure of the component A in one side of the membrane and on the other side of the membrane, respectively. Why are we doing this? Well, we're going to see this in a minute. How we're going to incorporate this permeability term into the equation that we want to solve. Um, remember, this is the equation, well, I'm going to go back a little bit. So this is the equation here that we want to solve. The molar flux of A times the thickness is equal to an integration term. If we multiply, sorry, if we divide it, if we divide this expression by delta P on both sides, we're not doing anything, right? Just uh, dividing both sides by delta P. We notice that the term on your left is equal to the permeability. But still, we still need to solve the term on your right. And we're going to use another trick. We're going to multiply and divide by delta C. So we multiply by the difference between the concentration in one side, and then we divide it as well. So again, we're not doing anything. It's just playing around with the expression. If we do so, we have two different terms on, your, on, on the right side of the equation. One is boxed in blue and the other one is boxed in green. The one boxed in green, uh, we can define it as an average diffusivity because if you pay attention, it somehow an average diffusivity over the membrane. So on the, um, let's say, we will have, once we solve the, the um, integration, we will have a variation of the diffusivity in relation to the concentration. And then it's divided by delta concentration. So we can assume that this is an average diffusivity. What happens with the box in blue? Well, I call this term solubility, and why? 
Well, if we assume that um, we can use ideal conditions, we can use the equations related to equilibrium and ideal conditions, we can apply the Henry's law. One way to express this Henry's law is this expression indicated here. So the concentration of the element A is a function of the solubility of the element A times delta P. That is, the solubility is equal to a concentration divided by delta uh, P. That's what Henry's law is indicating. And that's exactly what the term boxes in, in blue is. It's a solubility because it's the delta concentration divided by delta P. That is that, in this case, we can define the mass transfer equation for membranes as the permeability equals to the solubility of the element A times the average diffusivity of the element A. And this equation is critical. We're going to use this equation quite a lot for solving membranes uh, problems. So in summary, we will use the permeability definition, which correlates this new term permeability with the molar flux of the element A. And the second equation that we're going to use is the one box in, in red that I just defined. The permeability is equal to the solubility of the element times the average diffusivity. So these are the two main equations I'm going to use for membranes. How can I solve these equations? Well, in most cases, you will be able to take a look to a table where depending on the materials and the substance that you want to separate, you are going to be able to get a value of the diffusivity, the solubility, and the permeability. This table here is, is um, well, you can use it uh, in, in the exam and in your homework. And you see that there is a solute, which can be hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, CO2. This is just an example. Uh, there is another column, which is the type of material of the membrane. It could be neoprene, uh, rubber, some polyethylene. There is also an indication of the temperature when you can apply uh, these uh, numbers. And then the values of the diffusion coefficient, the solubility, and the, and the permeability. It's important that when you use Sorry. When, when you use this table, you need to pay attention to the units because sometimes it can be a little bit tricky. Okay, So do not forget to take into consideration the units of the solubility and permeability. Um, and now I'll give you a couple of examples how we can try to find materials uh, that will separate the substances that we want in an efficient way. In this graph here, there is a comparison between two different materials, two different polymers, PDMS and PSF. Those are two different materials and, well, they exhibit, of course, different diffusion coefficients. So when, you, when we want to separate, for example, CO2 from other gases, we get into these graphs and we see the value of the different diffusion coefficient. So depending on the monar flux that we want to separate, we will need a diffusion coefficient higher and lower, and therefore these graphs here can give us a, an indication. Same way with the solubility. Um, the temperature is a critical parameter affecting solubility, as we, I guess, we all know already. And in that, in this particular case, there is a comparison between these two materials, PSF and PDMS. And the same thing, depending on the type of solvent or the type of solute that we want to separate, we might want to use one and another based on the solubility properties.
Uh, this is a very, very nice example. Is and, and I encourage you to take a look to this video. Um, it's more effective if we were to use nitrogen instead of air to fill the tires in our car. And the reason is because um, the driving force, the concentration that will be inside of the tire if we use nitrogen in relation to air is different. The driving force is different and therefore, um, uh, we're going to do an example and um, put some numbers, when we, fi when we file the, um, when we fill our tires with air, the mass transfer, mass transfer from inside to outside is quicker than if we fill the tires with nitrogen. And therefore, if we use air, we will have to refill our tires again and again much more often than if we use nitrogen. This is the example that uh, we can use in this case, it's not nitrogen, but it's uh, hydrogen. And we're going to see how we can apply the mass transfer equations to just make an estimation on how um, uh, hydrogen can, can leak through a neoprene rubber. The same will be applied to uh, a tire in our vehicle. Okay, now we're going to stop here. Um, the next video will be about mass transport in utra filtration. Thank you.